Because my philosophy is there's no free lunch. The day I realized that, I, I felt I'd grown up. <laughs> Everything has a price. I mean, it, it, isn't, it isn't money, it could be time, it could be experience, it could be love, it could be whatever, but you don't get anything for nothing. Well, I guess I really came to public prominence <laughs> after the Metropolitan Museum of Arts Fashion Institute was kind enough to give me a showing. They called and asked me if I would do a small accessory show, and I thought, well, that would be fun. Harold Hokoda, who was the head honcho at the Institute, had a brilliant idea, and he said, I think to show accessories out of context doesn't make any sense. I think we have to show the public what to do with them and how to use them. In that event, do you think you might be able to spare five outfits? We'll have the figures, and I will choose the garments. They came into the closets, they went into the armoires, they opened the boxes, they looked in the drawers, they crawled under the bed. Seriously. But we had no room, so we had to push all the furniture to the edges of the room. My poor husband, he had this much space on the dining room table to have his dinner. He was so, he said, oh, I'm so lucky that you didn't make me sleep in a drawer. <laughs> and they hauled away about 300 garments. It worked out very well, and it was a big smash. Bill Cunningham gave me a full page and told every designer that came over from Europe that they couldn't leave and go back unless they came to see my show. So everybody came, and he told all the New York designers, why waste your time going to Paris? Just go to 81st Street and Fifth <laughs> Avenue. He was wonderful. How do you define style? Attitude. Uh-huh. Style is attitude, attitude, attitude. It ain't what you do, it's the way how you do it. You've been an interior designer for many years um, and a textile designer. Um, and the way you create your house is also very unique, the way you decorate. How are the two things connected? Oh, well, I think it's all part of the same psyche. I think uh, if you think a certain way, I mean, I think good design is self-expression not copying somebody else. Mm -hmm. If I like old things, I like old things at home, and mm -hmm. I like old things, I mean, I like, I've like. i always liked vintage or things that look old. Mm -hmm. Makes me look better. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of interiors are quite serious. Yours is, is um... a very, oh, I don't, I think that's terrible. I mean, if you're a serious person, then I guess it's good to have a serious <laughs> house. But I don't take myself seriously, and. I like to have fun and I like, I think it's good to have a few little mistakes. I don't like everything. I think it was Diana Vreeland said, you can suffer from too much good taste. Right. Oh, it's wonderful. I'm glad that you're at HSN. I hope you stay for a long, long time. Well, if they'll have me, I'm here. A lot of what you're wearing tonight is, is merch, is, is your product, right? Yeah, yeah, home shopping. I figured I might as well flaunt it. It, it went very well. I just feel like in this age of everyone seeking fame and people being famous for just being famous, um, it sort of just happened to you by accident. Oh, everything that's important in my life has happened by accident. I never planned, I've never had a business plan. I don't plan anything. If it happens, it happens. And if not, I'm not upset about it. I've never planned things. You have to be open and take advantage of it. I've missed a lot of things, but you can't do everything. Just to end, can you sort of give me three words that define your approach to life? Only one trip. <laughs> Might as well oh. live it up. <laughs>